Alrighty, and this is the last eight and a half minutes. Nearly finished. See right now it's doing the honeycomb infill. It's at about 50%. Half air, half material. I'm doing the innermost layer, starting at the outer part and going inwards. going from the inner outwards. And I think it's the last bit. This is the uh, inside. This uh, aluminum build platform is heated so that the object remains flat. But I also have a mirror, and this film that you see is actually ABS that's been dissolved by acetone, so that uh, it's a little stickier. I don't have anything right now that I could show you that would be warped, but because I've been using the mirror. Anyway, you'll notice uh, right here in the center of the screen there that it's... Uh, Got some vertical and horizontal stair stepping action there. Add a uh, software, not the printer. Same with those lines across and those there and flat line and lines there. Okay, anyway, this furry looking stuff is the support for these horizontal parts here. As uh, you can't see here, I'll show you on the software, but uh, areas like. Uh, Here and right here and right here I need to be supported because it would otherwise deposit the plastic in space. And of course, right here and also on the inside, which uh, I get some light here fast. Let's see. Just barely, right in there. But uh, it also does. I'll show you the file here really quick. There's the supports in the inside there. And the reason for that is because of that angle right here. It's uh, in excess of 45 degrees, so we needed to support it. Anyway, this is about what it's going to look like. Um, this build platform here I've tailored to fit the actual build platform. And uh, this file is a STL, which is short for Standard Tessellation Language. And then I use a program called a slicer to slice it. So S L I C 3 R. That's the version or the uh, name of the software and this is the configuration interface it's the icon there there's the version and uh, in the software you'll also see the lines that you saw right here right here and those uh, staircases you see right there are right here. Right here. 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 And uh, they are not supposed to look like that. They're supposed to look like that. And they don't. I don't know why, but that's how it is. Anyway, it's got about four and a half minutes left. It is on layer 1485 of 1492. I keep the, the build platform at 220 degrees Celsius and the, I'm sorry, the extruder at 220 and the platform at 110. That's where I have it set here. There's some controls there and the G-code editor. Ooh, 
Ooh, that was bad. And my pinner paused there for a second. Anyway, this whole thing has 2.8 million lines of instructions. And that's just a lot of instructions. Anyway, that's what it start, looks like when it starts out. Anyway, that's uh, how the 3D printing software is. So you place the object, you slice it, and then it turns it into G-code so that the printer can put out all these layers. And I'll show you what the commands look like as they're streaming by. And you can tell it's uh, in the neighborhood of 2.9 million. It's doing pretty. It's doing the uh, infill right now. Which looks like this on the screen. All of those lines there is what it's doing right there. And a pretty good video card. That's going to show all of it. A little bit of a delay, but. Anyway, that's what 3D printing looks like. Nice 29 inch monitor. Anyway, it's uh, about 18 inches wide and probably 28 all together with the filament. That's the filament going into the extruder head. I have a support chain for the cable going into a channel because goodness knows chains aren't perfect when they're made out of plastic. Anyway, it's working. It's wearing out though. And that's what the filament looks like on the spool. And there. I made a little support for it so it doesn't mess up. And there's some support there. And got the electronics in the back there. Anyway, hooked up to my computer. Cable internet. Anyway, that's it.